All right. Hey everybody, welcome to this another tutorial. Um, this time we're going to create a VST plugin or an AU plugin for your audio production software. So if you're on Mac and you're using Xcode or something or on Windows, you can use like FL Studio or Cubase or you know any of those kind of software. You know you've got all these you know VST plugins and stuff. Today I'm going to show how to create a distortion plugin for your guitar. And before we dive right into the code, I want to demo what this plugin actually does. So I'm going to open FL Studio here. And the current setup that I've got going on is I've got my guitar plugged into my sound card with an audio jack, you know, your normal guitar jack. Um, and then I've got the output of my sound card plugged into my little Marshall amp that I've got right next to me on my desk here. Um, I'm surprised that it actually fits on the desk. I mean, it's quite a neat little amp. Um, so I'm going to be demonstrating this in FL Studio. Um, I mean, this will work in Cubase or any other software. And it doesn't matter on what platform you are, you can still follow along. This is a cross-platform solution. So if you're on Windows, Mac or Linux, you can use any audio production software on any of those platforms. And this will actually work. Um, so you're not limited by platform or anything like that. This should work pretty much everywhere. So, um, okay, I've got FL Studio open. I'm going to add a VST here. I'm going to add the plugin. So it's VST test plugin. So there we go. This is this is what the distortion plugin actually looks like. So it, it's very simple. We've only got four knobs on this thing. It's a drive knob, a range knob, a blend knob, and a volume knob. There's no tone controls or anything on this thing yet. So I'm going to add the guitar over there and I'm going to play this through my amp. So if I grab the guitar All right. So Okay, so I'm just going to take you through the different sort of controls on this thing. So the first knob is obviously the drive knob. This is the amount of distortion that we want, right? Um, and this sort of goes together with the range knob. So they sort of act together. Um, so if you put a low drive on, you will sort of hear a very quiet, you know, a little... It's just a little bit of distortion and we can put even less distortion on by decreasing the range so you can hear that there's sort of just a little bit of distortion so it's like a crunchy kind of sound so it just adds a little bit of crunch to the distortion okay anyway the Second knob, or the third knob on this thing is the blend knob. This blends in the clean sound of your guitar. So you can sort of blend between the dist distorted sound and the clean sound. So you can, for example, add a lot of distortion, like a heavy distortion. But then you can blend the clean sound into it a little bit. So you can put a l only let the distortion only come through a little bit and then put a lot of clean sound on there. On the mix, so it sounds something like. So yeah. You can hear a lot of clean sound coming through there, um, which is the idea of this control. So um, okay, at the moment this distortion plugin doesn't have any. Um, any tone controls or anything like that it's very simple it's only got your basic you know just the distortion stuff so there are no high pass filters or low pass filters or anything like that on here so what i'm going to do to make the sound a little bit better is i'm going to add the distortion over there then i'm going to just add a little bit of filtering on there so i'm going to add a filter there and after the distortion i'm going to add another filter over there so before we distort the sound, we usually want to, you know, cut the lows a little bit like that, you know, um, something like this, you know, just to get rid of, and then we want to boost the mids a, a tiny bit, you know, 
something like that. That should do. And then right here, we want to cut the very the highest frequencies, boost the mids, sort of a bit. Something like that. That should give a much nicer distortion. So if we actually There we go. So yeah, that's obviously a lot better, um, adding some filtering to this. We may actually implement this in the distortion plugin itself later, but that won't, we won't do that in this tutorial, and that will come in a future video. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I hope you guys like this distortion. Anyway, um, let's. All right, so that's basically it, guys. That's the distortion. So now let's dive into the code, into how this actually works, so that we can create this thing, right? So I'm gonna just put this, you know, switch this off for now. All right, so let me put this guitar down because it's in the way. All right, so, geez, I hope it doesn't fall there. Anyway. Let's dive into the code now. So what we're going to do is, okay, so there are a couple of things that you're going to need to install first. Uh, let's see, we're already seven minutes in. Goodness, I've taken a bit long there. So there are a couple of things you're going to need for this. So the first thing you're going to need is we're going to be using, well, the first thing you should know is we're going to be using the juice framework to create this distortion and while well, we could just do it from scratch i mean completely without any template code or anything done for us but that's really unnecessary i mean it's that means we have to create the gui stuff ourselves and it's just a pain in the butt to go through all of that so i thought you know let's use a framework like juice or something you know so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to juice and juice, let's say source, right? Because we want the source code. Uh, so you'll see this Jetta page. So just, you know, click on that. And then here we are. So this is the juice 5 library. So you want to download the source code. So just go there, clone or download, and then download the zip file, right? After you've downloaded that zip file, you will have this juice master zip. So you're just going to want to, you know, extract this somewhere on a desktop or anywhere where it's, where you can access it. Then you will see this juice master folder. That's what we want, right? So that's the first thing you're going to need. The second, if you're under Windows or Windows 10, you're going to need the Windows 10 SDK. So Win 10 SDK. So you'll be able to download it from Microsoft website, I believe. So yeah, there we go. Windows 10 SDK development app. Windows app development thing. So yeah, you're gonna want to download this, right? This is absolutely required. Like it, it's not optional. If you're under Windows 8 or something, you're gonna need the Windows 8 SDK, I believe. Um, you're gonna need the SDK. If you're under Mac, you're not gonna need to download any SDKs, um, except for the Steinberg SDK. So that's the other thing we need to download. We need to download the Steinberg Berg VST SDK. You know. So, uh, VS, geez, I don't even know, probably this one. So this is, this is just an SDK, so you're going to want to download 
this guy over there the VST 3.6.8 audio plugin SDKs right so this isn't just for only for VSTs this is for AU plugins if you're under Mac or using Logic Pro X or something then you're gonna take the AU SDK of course if you're under Windows we use the VST SDK so just go ahead and download this um, this should include pretty much everything you're gonna need and once you've downloaded that you want that extracted somewhere we can you know somewhere on your C drive it will look something like this VST SDK and there it is right uh, so just in, extract that somewhere probably on your C drive I guess is the best place to put it wherever you want really it doesn't matter um, and that's really all you're gonna need um, apart from that you're just gonna need a compiler uh, or well a an IDE I'm gonna be using Visual Studio for this I've got the latest version 2017 so yeah um, let's get started so the first thing you want to do is go into the juice folder the juice master then we want to go to extras then producer and then builds and then you want to select your IDE so if you're under Linux you want to build this make file if you're under Mac you want to build this you know Xcode project in uh, Xcode if you're under Visual Studio on Windows you want to select your version of Visual Studio and open up the project file that's what I'm going to do so let's open up the SLN file if you're under Visual Studio if you're under Mac or whatever just open the X Xcode project and build it on Mac um, I'm going to explain how to do this on Windows, Mac and Linux uh, while I'm doing this but I'm going to be demonstrating this under Windows so if you're in, on uh, any other platform just follow along you'll be able to follow along without any issues um, on Linux you're just going to need GCC or something to compile the producer um, app so let's open this Visual Studio project uh, let's see so you will basically just have this producer app the only thing you need to do is you need to go and go to build and build the solution that's it just build it right you don't need to do anything um, and at this point you can pause the video because it's gonna take a while to build mine's already built so as you can see it's already finished so once it's built you want to go to the x86 folder or whatever yours is called then go to debug app and then you'll see this producer executable there then you need to open that up because that's what we're going to be using then close close project um, okay so if you don't already have an account you're going to want to create an account with juice um, just create a student account or a you know personal account or something which is completely for free so you're going to want to sign in and create an account before you can actually use juice so just do that it's, it's not a big deal or anything anyway if you already have an account then you can just create a new project and this is what you will see um, you can see that this is quite powerful you can do a whole bunch of things with it uh, GUI applications animated applications OpenGL stuff even um, dynamic libraries um, audio applications and audio plugins what we're looking for is an audio plugin and you can see this creates a VST AU um, or TAS or anything oh crap what am I doing uh, or any kind of plugin so it's cross-platform completely so let's click on audio plugin then you want to select your IDE that you're going to be using um, in my case I'm going to be using Visual Studio so Visual Studio 2017 is selected for me just select your version of Visual Studio so I'm going to call this distortion um, uh, VST you know or something um, then you're going to want to uncheck this checks box if it's selected and you're going to want to select the modules folder so just click on that and then you're going to want to browse to your juice master the juice folder that you extracted for the juice source code then you just want to click on modules and hit ok just to select the modules folder for this and then just create hit create to create the project that's really it um all right so the only thing we need to, you'll see that the project basically exists of four files, right? Four code files. There's a plugin processor um, and the plugin editor. So the editor is mainly all the user interface stuff, the GUI stuff, and the processor is where we do the actual hardcore audio processing things to create the distortion plugin. 
So let's go to product settings. There are a couple of things you need to set up here. So you can give yourself a company name. Just don't put anything like, you know, apostrophes and things in there. Because if you have things like this um, or this in, your, in the company name, then it's going to put that in the source code. And in C++, whenever you have this, you're indicating a new character. And whenever you have this, you're indicating a string, right? So don't put anything like that in the company name. Just put normal characters. Otherwise, you're going to get compile, compiling errors in your source code, which is going to be nasty. So just give yourself a company name if you want to, like um, VSTs. Oh, see, now I just almost did that. So just that should be good enough. So let's scroll down, see what other things there are. So we're going to, need to build a VST, right? That's checked. Um, we don't need the audio unit, so just uncheck that. You can build a VST3 if you want to. Um, I'm just going to do the normal VST. It works perfectly fine. VST3 is not necessary. It's really not. And then standalone plugin, I couldn't get that to work, so I'm just going to disable that anyways. If you can, you can do that if you want to. I'm not going to. Let's see what else. Um, C++11, yeah, that's right. Then plugin channel configuration. So we're going to need to do that. So you can see that this is just the mono stereo stuff. Um, here we basically just tell the thing that if we have one input, we have one output, two inputs, two channel outputs, things like that. This is the channel configuration. So let's do that. So we start off with curly brackets, one, comma, one, and then we have a comma. And then whenever we have two channels, there's an output, two channels. So... Just do that, no big deal, and that's it. Now go ahead and save the project, hit file, save. You can say it says saving, then open this up in Visual Studio. So click on your IDE button right there to open this up in your IDE. And there we go. Um, we're not going to actually edit the code in Producer. We're going to edit the code in Visual Studio because, I don't know, I'm just more familiar with Visual Studio. I've been using, and we're anyway going to need your IDE to compile this. Producer doesn't include a compiler, so you can only edit the code there. No point in doing that, really. So, it's loading all this includes and things. So now what we want to do is we want to link the project to either Steinberg SDK. So, go to Project Properties. Um, Project properties, and we're going to do this for both the projects there. So then go to C++, Visual C++ directories, include directories, and let's add the include paths there. So we're going to need to add the Steinberg SDKs. Uh, let's see. VST SDK, VST2 SDK, public.sdk, source, VST2.x. Select that folder and also select um, VST SDK, VST2 SDK, just that. Then hit apply and let's do this for both the projects. So the other one as well, properties, visual C++ directories, include directories, edit. Uh, let's uh, put this. Let's C drive. VST SDK, VST SDK, no, public.sdk source VST2.x, that one, and then the other one, just the name, VST2.sdk, that's it. Hit apply, uh, right, so the projects are now set up. Uh, the code that we're going to edit is in the shared code project, so the um, distortion VST source, all right. There's our four source code files, right? So let's open these boys up. So now we're going to code the plugin. So we've already got basic template code already done for us, which is part of the Juice framework, which I'm really grateful for because it's really tedious doing all the low-level you know, SDK stuff from scratch. It's a pain in the ass. So I'm very grateful for Juice, really. It works. It just works. I don't know how it works, but it works. So I'm really grateful for Juice for providing us with this amazing uh, framework. Really, this is... 
Jeez, it's amazing. Anyway, let's go to the plugin editor and let's start working on the GUI. So go into the header file of the plugin editor, so the .h file. Um, let's create our knobs so long. So we're going to go ahead and create these little knobs. So the drive, range, blend, and volume knob. As you can see, these are actually not knobs. They're just sliders. They're sliders which looks, which you know goes in like a rotation. So they're called rotary sliders. Very cool. Anyway, let's create these guys. Um, okay, so anyway, let's create these sliders. So they're part of the the plugin editor. So, okay, let's, these sliders are just called sliders, you know, there's a slider class which is part of Juice, the Juice framework which we're going to use and we're going to create these as pointers to objects and these pointers are called scoped pointers. So Juice has this nice scope pointer class which we're going to use and we're going to create a pointer to the slider. So this is a template class um, and we're, the first one is a drive knob. Um, Drive, which other knobs? Drive, range, blend, and volume. So, drive, range, then the blend, then the volume. So let me first explain this whole scope pointer thing, because I, I know you're probably wondering, what the heck is this scope pointer thing? Like, it doesn't make sense, right? And these are just normal pointers, like if we go to the definition of this, right, so go to definition, you will see that it basically says, um, this class holds a pointer which is automatically deleted, deleted when this object goes out of scope. So it's exactly what it says, it's a scoped pointer, a pointer to the object which um, is scoped. So whenever the object goes out of scope, the pointer is destroyed and it frees up the memory. So it's just a nice way of doing memory management inside of Juice. Uh, many ma memory man management is also very important and performance is very important when you do audio processing because um, the audio, your sound card, creates what's called an audio callback and this audio callback is called every, you know, 44.1 kilohertz, right? And if your code fails to provide an audio buffer for the sound card in time for the audio callback, your sound card is not going to receive an audio buffer in time and what's going to happen then is you're going to hear a weird buzzing noise in your audio which is really nasty and terrible so yeah performance is really important in audio processing it's super important so anyway we've created our knobs the next thing we need to do is um we need to create attachment for these, slider attachment for these, so that we can sort of slide the values and things. So these are also scoped pointers, um, scoped pointer, and these are called um, audio processor um, value tree state. I'm going to explain this a little bit later. Um, slider attachment, right? So, and we're going to call this a drive attachment. For the drive knob and then we're going to do this for every single other knob so jeez uh, drive range blend volume volume okay so Juice provides us with this whole, you know, value tree state thing. Um, it, it's an XML thing. It works with XML. I'm not exactly sure exactly 100% how it works, but I believe it creates an XML file which basically stores all your, you know, parameter values and things for parameters. It allows you to create things like presets and stuff like that. Like if, you have, if you've got any like presets and things, it allows you to create presets and save them and manage them in a very nice and neat way. So it, it works with XML. I'm not exactly sure but how it works, but we're going to be using this whole value tree state thing because it allows you to 
you know, share parameters between classes and things like that very easily. And it's very neat. It's a very nice way of doing things. Um, so that's why we use this value tree state things. Um, anyway, next thing we need to do is, uh, well, we're basically done with the edit file. So let's go to the plugin editor C++ file, the implementation file of this. And in the constructor right here, okay, so this is the size of our window, right? So this, I believe, is 500 by 200. So let's do that. 500, geez, 500 by 200. And we're going to add all our knobs and things in here. So let's create them. So we want to add and make visible our knobs, right? So we're going to do the drive knob, drive knob. Um, and we're going to inst oh, it's not instant. We didn't initialize. Anyway, we're just going to say equals to new slider. And just call this drive, I guess. Doesn't matter. Then we can say drive knob now e dots. Oh, right. We have to remember that we created a pointer, so we need to dereference this like this. Then we just set slider style because we want the rotary slider so it looks like a rotational thing. So slider. Rotary, rotary, there we go. Then they, by default, they come with a text box, you know, for a label or thing. We don't want that. We're going to do the text manually later. So drive knob, the reference set, deck, set, drive. box style um, so what we want is the slider no text box because we don't want a text so thanks geez for that option false what is the other thing the width and the height oh geez 100 by 100 should do right so let's do this for every single knob so this is for the drive knob, the range knob, the other knobs, drive, range, jeez, oh, no, this is the drive, the range, blend, and volume. Range, let's, no, let's copy this. Alright, so that is that. The next thing we want to do is we want to do the attachment, the value tree state things that we can attach to you know, the, the parameter values and things like that. So, yeah, let's do that. So, the drive attachment um, is equal to a new dear processor value tree value tree state um, the slider attachment right so now we're actually going to create the attachment so let's see what parameters uh, this got only one constructor so the first thing is a audio processor value tree state audio processor value tree state state to control oh so this takes in the state from the audio processor which is this processor P the right there but we haven't created the state yet so we actually need to go to the plugin processor the processor that's there which is referenced as this P we get this plugin processor so the header file let's get the header file let's create that state that it's looking for the value tree state thing so 
let's go to the header file let's go to yeah let's create this in private then we're just going to create a getter for this in the public um, side of things so again scoped pointer um, and this we want an audio processor value tree state or do processor so value tree state so value tree state and we're just gonna call it you know state state right that should be good enough then we want to create a getter for this in the public you know under public public we need to do the getter so this is going to return audio processor value tree state reference always pass by reference for performance so to avoid copying get state then yeah that's it now let's implement this in the c++ file so go to the cpp let's see so here's a constructor the other things where's the process block where we do the processing oh so here in the process block this is where we're going to do all the hardcore audio processing and stuff in this process block method so let's do the get state method below this all right because why not so let's copy this get state um get state so this is the distortion audio processor because this method belongs to that class and then we return a point at the do referenced state all right because it takes in reference it returns the reference so we do reference it and put it in there right now we can go back to the plugin editor and we can continue this drive attachment thing the attachment thing so now what we've done you can see that this this method takes in parameters you know the the state to control and this state comes from the audio processor which is this p right there the p is the audio processor the the state is part of the state that we've just put in there so we can say p dot get state call this get state get state method that we just created there we go get state it works then it takes in the parameter ID, which I believe is just drive. Yeah, I've called it drive, small caps. And then it takes in the slider to control, the slider to control. And this is the drive knob that we created. So, but it takes in a reference. It doesn't take in the pointer. And remember, it's a scoped pointer that we created. So we need to dereference it. Drive knob. Just like that so then we can just do this for each knob so drive range oh geez, blend volume range blend volume I know there's like this you know user interface stuff is not exciting but it has to be done right i know it's we're not going into the hardcore audio processing stuff yet that's a little bit later but we'll get there just just you know hang on drive range blend volume that's it now we're almost finished guys seriously we're almost there now we just need to align this <laughs> so it says here this is generally generally where you'll want to lay out the positions of any subcomponents in your editor so let's do what it says let's lay them out in here right it says this is where you'll lay out the positions and things so let's do the positions and stuff of these knobs and things over there so the way we do that is we call the you know the drive for every knob we just call the you know set bounds thing derive knob set bounds this will 
set the layout, you know, the sizes and things. So, this works like this, right? We have an X position, the Y position, the width and the height of the knob. And we're just going to make the width and the height 100. So, and we want them nicely um, laid out in the center of the thing, right? Like, like this. So, the way I did this was, you know, let's take the, I do the width and the height first. So, we're going to say get width width and then what I do is what am I doing get width get width and then I divide this by five because we have four knobs so if I divide by five then I can just multiply by the position that this thing is at so multiply by one and let's round this in more brackets by one because it's the first knob on the thing then we subtract from it the si its size divided by 2, right? So the size is 100, so we just they say 100 divided by 2. Now we do the height, the, the y position. So again, get height divided by 2 because we want it in the center. Um, let's round these by brackets. Then we subtract again the width, the height divided by 2 from it. And then the width and the height is just 100 and 100, right? That's it. So we do this for each knob. So drive, range, blend, volume. Volume. Now this is the first one, second, third, fourth. So I just do that. Should work fine. Now let's test this out. So go ahead and build this build solution. Please work. <laughs> Right, I hope I don't get any compile errors. I always do, so I won't be surprised if there are errors in the code. So far so good, but it has only started, so... Jeez, let's compile. Let's go to the VST, open your VST folders along where you store all your VST plugins. So, I'm going to open that, the VST... VST plugins, right? This is where I put all my VST plugins for FL Studio and Cubase and whatever. Some of them are stored on other places, but you know, the ones I make are all here, so um, that's that. Let's see, what have we got? Gee, how long is this? Oh, we're already 40 minutes in. Jeez, guys, this is going to be a long video. Sorry about that. But yeah, we are making a distortion plugin. I mean, what's not hard about it right and we haven't even got to the audio processing <laughs> jeez okay this is going to be a long video but we'll pull through you know Oof. jeez okay okay right successful so now let's open this uh, open the solution folder and go to x86 debug vst and right there this dll file that's our vst plugin if you're on mac you'll have an au plugin right so select that put it in your vsts folder continue right there distortion vst.dll now let's go back to fl studio more plugins add more plugins manage plugins Where did that window? Oh, start scan. There you go, it found it. Distortion VST DLL. Storing press it. What the hell is it doing? Okay, anyway, let's scroll down. I don't know where it is. Oh, there we go. Distortion VST. Let's check that. Now we'll be able to add this. Let's say distortion VST right there. Critical error.
Let's retry this. Okay, so Okay, yeah, I know why this is happening because it the knobs hasn't been constructed yet right in the audio processor Right, so now let's go to the audio processor C++ file. Uh, this was a waste of time. Anyway <laughs> Jeez, okay Let's go to the constructor and let's actually construct these things, you know, so this is a constructor you can see it's all the exclusiveness, you know, over here, which we don't care about. So this is where we actually implement the constructor. What mess is this, anyway? Just things for the compiler, I guess. Um, oh, we haven't even created the state yet. Oh, geez, duh. Um, so let's you know, actually create a state. So state is equal to new audio processor value tree state this takes in I don't even know audio processor to connect we're inside of the audio processor so let's just dereference this then we've got let's see um, undo manager I don't have an undo manager so no pointer let's see if this will work now I think we actually have to add the parameters to the knobs as well I don't think it'll work yet but let's see maybe it does maybe so let's copy this VST plugin over to our VST folder again. See if it works. Replace. Continue. Open the audio software. Please work. Please work. Please work. And it works, people. It works. You can see we've got our four knobs. And the hello world at the back there. So yeah, it works this time around. So yeah, okay. So let's go to the plugin editor because I found this hello world text. Let's just comment that out because we don't want that, right? Now let's go to the plugin processor. Let's let's add the parameters in the constructor right below where we created the state. So once the state Let's call the add parameter. Create an add parameter. We need to create them as well. Parameter. So that label text, let's just you know, make this drive as well. Then the range. Okay, so this is where you actually add the range. So this takes in a normalizable range object. So let's create that thing. Normalizable range. And this basically just, you know, takes in the range of freaking views. Oh, we need to specify the type. So this is also a template class. So I'm going to specify that this is a float and then there are different constructors for this. Let's there are nine of them. Let's see. Start and end. I guess we can use that. But this one is even better. So we can specify the starting range, the end of the range of the values, and the interval value. So by what it increments. So we can make it really accurate or really inaccurate if we want to. So we're obviously going to make it accurate. So the start value will always be 0, 0.0 or 0 0.f if you prefer for floating point, you know, efficiency. I don't know. Other one just 1.0 or 1.f. It doesn't matter really. Then the accuracy value, let's make this accurate. So let's say 
0 0.001 for very accurate values. This is insanely accurate, but it'll, it'll work, so that's fine. Then the default value, right? Default value. Um, we can just make this one. And then text function and the other thing, nothing. So just no pointers. No BTR. That's it. And this, of course, has to be done for every single knob for every parameter that we want to add. There are four of them, so. Oh, geez. Okay, what am I doing? So that works. Now we're going to do the XML value tree thing for the XML value tree state so that it can get stored and things in memory somewhere. So we say state, the state of the state is equal to value tree, value tree, and then we just add the parameter name in there. So drive. And we do this for every single thing. So the state of the state is basically the value tree. And volume. So this might look weird what I'm doing here. Like why do you set it equal to value tree? Then you suddenly set it equal to something else. I mean, this doesn't make sense, does it? But I think in the constructor or, some, or in the equals operator, I think it actually overloads this operator probably, possibly to, you know, yeah, it does overload it. Operator equal, yeah, it does. So it's it, it's got some way of indexing these in a weird way by overloading the operator. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I haven't taken a look at the class yet. So you can get to the class definition and look at how that works. I'm not going to. It's, it's, it's not interesting. Um, and now we just want to set the state information and stuff. And we do that. A little bit more down in the code, like where set state information. Let's look for that. Get state, no. Get state information and set state. This is what we want. Right. So it says here, you should use this method to store your parameters in the block. You could use either raw data or use the XML or value tree classes as intermediaries to make it easy to save and load complex data. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're using the intermediate stages that Juice provides with the value tree state and XML stuff. It really makes things a lot easier. So this, eh, after a bit of Googling, I found out this takes in the memory. It, it's actually in the demo as well. Um, they could have actually done this for you because, you know, this code is going to be similar for pretty much all the plugins in the world. Output string. Memory output stream, stream, let's call this stream, and this will be the, this takes in the, the destination buffer, which is this memory block thing, the dest data, and then it takes in the buffer size, or, I don't know what that is, boolean, yeah, false, yeah, let's just do that one, then state, state dot write to stream so just do a stream like I said this is geez they could have really did this code in as part of the framework I'd say but anyway they didn't so value tree tree value tree tree Create a value tree equals value tree read from data 
like this read from data looks actually looks like a, uh, it's a method in the value tree class. Never mind. So this is the data and the size in bytes. Like I said, I mean, if they've got this par these parameters as inputs there anyways, they could have just added this line for you. I mean, I don't see the point. Anyway, if if tree dot is valid. So here we just check if the thing is valid. If it's valid, we just, you know, add the tree to the state. If it's not, we don't. Otherwise, we're going to get some weird exception if it's not valid. So state, state, right? There we go. And that's it. That's now we're actually done. Now we can just, geez, guys, now it's time to the hard code audio processing stuff. So now let's go to the process block method in the plugin processor. So this is where we're going to do all the heavy hardcore things, the terrible audio processing stuff. So, um, yeah, it says this is a place where you'd normally do the guts of your plugins audio processing. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the guts of the plugins audio processing. So you can just ignore this little for loop over here. This is what really matters. So we're gonna clear this. Um so basically how this works is for every channel, right? Now the channels are your left and your right channels. Like so if you're using mono audio, you only have one channel. If you're using stereo audio, you have two channels. And you can also have more channels in some cases, but that's sort of irrelevant in this case, right? In this case, we're only going to have two channels. Um, if you're stereo, if you're using mono, then only one channel, you know. You can basically choose the amount of channels what you want. Anyway, for every channel, it gets a pointer, a float pointer to the channel, and to the buffer. Now this buffer is a buffer, uh, a buffer, buffer which is basically like an array of float values. It's an array of float values. Now those float values in the array are the audio samples. So you're going to get a buffer, which is an array of floating point values. And all those floating point values are basically the audio data in the buffer. Those are your audio samples, right? So those are the different frequencies sampled by your digital to analog, well, your analog to digital converter in a sound card. Um, so those are the values that we're going to tamper with. And you can see it already created this flight pointer for us. A flight pointer to the channel data. Um, so this is basically an array of floating point values. So we can say channel data zero or one or whatever is equal to some value right then we suddenly put a value into the that you know the first audio sample in the buffer we don't want to do that of course that will corrupt that audio data and cause noises and things so now let's do the audio processing so Okay, well, the first thing we're going to do is we want the parameters for all the knobs. So we don't want to get the parameters in this loop because that's going to slow down the loop, which is not what we want. So we're going to have a floating point value like the drive value, the drive. So that's going to be the value of the drive knob, right? And this is a, we're going to do, the state is a pointer, so we want to dereference the state. Get a raw parameter value. And we want to get the drive value, right? Drive. Now we're just going to get all the parameter values so that we can process these. Drive, range, blend, and volume. All right, so now I've got all the parameter values that we need, and now we can just do the plain audio processing stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is, for every sample, we're going to distort the audio sound. That's what we want to do. 
So we've got an array to all these samples, but we want to do this for every sample. So let's create a for loop. So for every integer sample, sample is equal to zero sample smaller than buffer dot get num samples no this is a method so then samples plus plus we just increment the samples integer sample I mean Right, so now we can do this thing for every single sample, but what we can also do instead of, we can just say channel data, you know, channel data, and I put the sample in there so that we can modify the current sample. But we, what we can also do is we can increment, so channel data plus plus, then we increment the pointer so that it points to the next bit of channel data. You can do it any way you want, really. So let's do the distortion. So let's let's first talk about what distortion actually is, how it actually works. So a distortion plugin, you may have probably, you know, if, if, if you've ever played around with your amp or something, if you crank up the volume extremely high, you will sometimes hear a slight bit of distortion coming through, right? Um, so you might probably think, well, it's easy to create distortion. Just crank up the volume crazy high. Put a lot of gain on something and that creates distortion. Well, that's not really entirely true. Distortion does mean applying a lot of gain to, gain to an audio signal, but it's not just that. It's a lot more than that. Distortion is a result of clipping audio sound. Let me demonstrate this. So... Let me go into open up GeoGebra. So for those of you who don't have GeoGebra, go ahead and download GeoGebra. It's useful, really, really useful. It allows you to visualize graphs and functions on things and manipulate them and oh, do all sorts of, kind of fancy maths with graphs and things, which is really use useful in audio processing if you want to visualize an audio function. It can come in really handy. So, Typically, you'd have your audio sound, right? So we can, for example, say sine of x, right? There's our sine wave, right? Now, a lot of people would say, well, distortion, you just amplify this thing a lot. You just put a lot of gain to this to create distortion. Well, that's not true. And here's why that's not true. Let's say, multiply this by 2, right? Now, it's just extremely loud. It's just... You know, the amplitude has gone up. It's just louder. It's not distorted. It's just louder. Sometimes it would distort because there's a bit of clipping going on. But on its own, if you just make something loud, it won't distort. And yes, I make things louder. As you can see, I just multiplied the sine wave by two. So in the plugin, we can also we can just easily do that. You know, we can crank up the volume. So we can just you know take the signal. So the channel data, so we dereference the channel data so that we have a floating point and we can just say multiply this by let's say the drive value for instance, right? Then we amplify that signal a lot. But that just you know makes it louder. It doesn't create distortion at all, it just makes things very loud. It won't distort it. So the way we distort things is we clip the value. The way we do that is we say the maximum value it can go to is, for instance, 1. So what we do is, you'd, for example, create a line right there, you know. I want to create a line, please. There we go. Something like that, right? Um... So it'll go up, then it will suddenly see this, and then it will go there, and then there. So it won't actually reach this bow. Ah, uh, jeez, oh that was a terrible explanation. So let's say we want to clip the audio at 1. So it can't go louder than 1, right? That's what we want to do, right? Now, we can clip it by just, you know, 
making sure the maximum value it can go to is 1. So everywhere where we see a 1, we clip the audio. So basically what will happen is the sound wave will go, it will go up, it will go up. It will see this is 1, this is the maximum. We can't go higher than 1, so let's just go along the straight line. It will go down again, it will reach negative 1. See, okay, we're already at negative 1. We can't go higher than that, so let's just go straight across the line. That will create... Um, that will create a distortion effect. That will make the sound distorted. And the way we do that is we can just simply use an if statement. Say if the channel data, so if the channel data is bigger than 1, then channel data is equal to 1, right? That will clip the value at 1, making sure it can't go either. We of course want to do dereferences. Um, but that's not what we're actually going to do to create this distortion. As you can see, this creates a very hard, sudden change, sudden, you know, messy kind of distortion. That's not what we want. We want a beautiful, smooth, nice distortion. And the way we do that, let me show you how we do that. To do that, we use a nice function. So this function is 2 divided by pi times arctan, so a tan of x. Now look at this beauty. So as you can see, this function is very smooth, but also the maximum value is 1. As you can see, this is 1. It'll never quite reach 1. You can go on, it'll go closer and closer to 1, but it will never reach 1. Uh, and it's very smooth, it's a very smooth way of clipping things. There's no sudden hard line cut off anywhere. So, we just apply this formula to this. So, 2 divided by pi times the octane of x. That's the distortion function we're going to use, the clipping algorithm. So, the first thing we do is we amplify the signal so that it will actually clip. The more we amplify the flight, the closer the value will values will go to 1, in other words, the more it will be clipped and the distortion will be heavier. So here's how we do that. So we say channel data is equal to 2, we of course want to do 2 divided by pi, so we say float pi, 2 divided by pi times a tan of the channel data, right? And that's it, we're done. That creates the distortion. But right now, all we've done is the drive knob, right? Only the drive is multiplied in there. We haven't done the blend or the range or the volume yet. So let's do the range quickly. And we simply just multiply the range in there with the drive knob, because I told it, well, they kind of they go together. This is based change the range by which the drive knob is allowed to go. So the more you increase the range, the more you increase the maximum drive value you can go to. So the more, you know, you change the range in which you can adjust the drive knob. The maximum value, basically. So now I've done that. Now I need to do the blend. But the blend blends in the clean signal. Right now, We've already distorted the signal right there. We can't get any clean signal anyway. So what we need to do is before we applied any gain or anything to the channel data, we need to save it as a clean value, right? So float, let's call this clean signal, right? Clean sig is equal to channel data. So this is the clean signal before it has been distorted. Then we apply gain to it and then we clip the gain to create the distortion effect. Now we want to blend this distorted value in with a clean signal value, right? This clean signal. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's round this in brackets, because this is a distorted signal. Now we want to do this is we want to multiply this by the blend value, right? So if the blend is low, it multiplies by low value, so then only a little bit of distortion is going to come through, right? If the blend is high, a lot of it is going to go through. So let's this by brackets again. So we're going to add, what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to add the clean signal to this. 
and then divide by 2 to create the average value between the clean signal and the distorted signal. That will give you the blend between the two. So let's add the clean signal to this. So clean sig. Now we want to multiply this by the blend value as well, but we want to multiply this by 1 divided by the blend. Then we want to take all of this and divide it by 2. But now, we want to multiply the volume in as well. So let's add another bracket there for the volume. So now I multiply this by the volume. And guys, that is basically it. That's how you create a distortion plugin. But I'm not quite finished yet. Um... Right, I just want to surround this in brackets as well because we'll just add a bracket there as well for safety reasons, you know, you never know. So we're already an hour in. This has been taking long so long. So that's it. That is the distortion. Now let's go back to the plugin editor because no plugin processor. Let's go to the constructor of the plugin processor where we created these things. So for the drive knob, the minimum value is 0, maximum is 1, default value is 1. That's fine. For the range, we want it to go up to at least like 3000, you know, so we can create a very heavy distortion. Then for the blend, yeah, that's between 0 and 1. That's perfectly fine. For the volume, let's make the volume, you know, go up to like 3. Um, like that. Now let's go ahead and build this and let's test out this distortion plugin. Because in theory, we're basically done. Um, so let's test it out and see if it works. Um, so it's building, building, and it's the build succeeded. So let's go to the VST folder, your project folder, copy the VST plugin, DLL file, or AU, whatever you're using. Then go to your VST plugins folder, replace it in there. Then open up your audio production software or whatever you're using. Let's open up, let's go distortion VST. There we go, guys. That's our distortion plugin. So now, let me grab my guitar. Let's crank up the volume a bit. didn't do was um, you will notice that there is no there's no labels on these knobs so oh, let's just quickly add those labels um, so go to the plugin editor C++ file and you will see somewhere we saw this little bit of text this other world text there we go this other world text right we're gonna use that as a template to sort of you know add text to this thing so So let's add the text to this. So we're going to say g dot draw text, you know, draw text. Okay. 
um, drive. Let's call this, yeah, let's make the text drive. What other parameters is it taking? The area. Okay, so this is basically the is basically this, right? The area, the x and y positions and the thing. So let's add this. We're going to keep it the same as the other things because it is basically the same. Um, then that's a width. Now the height. So we can do the height thing. So that's this bit over there. Let's add this as well. Then instead of, you know, this minus 100 divided by 2 thing, we're just going to say plus 5. And then uh, I think that should do it. And then the width and the height, 100 by 100. We want to make it center, so justification, justification, centered, false, right? That's the text. So now we just do this for every knob. One, two, three, four, drive, range. Blend volume. You can build this. Replace this with none because the plugin has to be disabled and sort of exited before you can actually replace the DLL file. Let's replace that. Replace and continue. And what do you know? There's all the labels and everything, and this is distortion plugin, guys. Done. So this was really fun to do, actually. I see I've done the blend knob incorrectly, so <laughs> this is embarrassing, really. How did I go wrong there? Anyway, let's see. We multiply this. Let's just see, maybe that was, no, it can't be it. Clean Seagull times one, oh, sorry, it's not one divided, it's supposed to be one minus the blend. Okay, so just rebuild that. That's supposed to be one minus the blend, not one divided by the blend. Um, it's not the inverted, it's just one minus the blend, okay? So just do that, then it should work absolutely fine. So now... Let's, you know, talk about... Um, that's it, guys. Thank you all for, you know, pitching in for this. This was really cool. Uh, it was really fun. I'm, I'm planning to do a whole like series on this. In the next one we can probably go ahead and do some low pass filters and high pass filters and everything, do some tone controls um, for the distortion. 
we can do some reverbs, delays, and you know, harmonic freeze plugins. Um, I was also thinking about doing a series about you know, doing things like um, reverse engineering actual analog electronics um, for guitar effects and pedals and things, and then actually simulating that. Um, because if you reverse engineer electronics, you can actually write a derivative form formula out for the circuit. And then you can implement that in C++ and then just, you know, create an exact identical simulation of what a, that ex electronics would do to your audio signal. You would simulate that and you would, you know, create that plugin. So I'm planning on doing teardowns of a whole bunch of, you know, effects pedals and things, analog ones, of course, and then um, simulating them in C++. And I'll be recording that, I think. Um, that's going to be quite fun. And yeah, if there's any suggestions, any requests, any things you guys want to know, any questions, please post them in the description of this video. Also, another thing, if you go to my YouTube channel, you may notice there's no channel out there. Like, if I go to YouTube, like, my channel is dead. Well, not dead, hopefully not dead. But if I go to my channel... You'll see absolutely no channel art. That's a problem. I need channel art. And, you know, I'm not an artist or Photoshop, you know, person. So, even if you guys, you know, would like to make some channel art for my channel, please do so. And post it in the description of the video or somewhere. Um, or you can send me an email. Um, or anything like that. I would really love to check it out. Um, if you guys have channel art submissions for me, really, that'll be great. Um... So I want something sort of in the style of, you know, some programming things, electronic stuff, you know, um, things like that. Because that's those are the kind of videos that I make. Um, so yeah, anyway, if there are anything like that, um, please post that. Anyway, guys, um, good day. I'll see you all in the next one. The next video will probably be a voxel engine tutorial one, because I want to do another voxel engine one. I just wanted to finish the whole terrain generation thing and stuff like that, which is going to be really fun. So pitch in for that as well. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.